Welcome back, Heroes fans. We have series number two waiting, and Mighty, of course, going against Blossom. As we mentioned, Blossom is a team that brought Chogao twice. They even won against MVP Black. They won in Raxis and Midi with the protection of Ario. Seemed very strong. Maybe today will be another day we'll see Chogao in action. Definitely, there's a good chance that we see Chogal play today, especially mm -hmm. if either team chooses to play on Braxis Holdout, which is considered in Korea to be the best map for Chogal. But this ma this match today is not only going to be about Chogal; it's also going to be two very desperate teams going at each other. Mighty still have a chance to go to the Eastern Clash, but That's in right. order to do it, they have to win today. Then they have to take down L5 next week so it's a high task but the first step is defeating blossom today and can they manage to do it if it had been phase one then i would have said yes without hesitating blossom were a very weak team in the past phase but in phase two this blossom is a new blossom That's they right. have been entirely invigorated and not only because they have exchanged two players on their roster but because they are a new team from the mindset up. They The sacrifices and dedication that they have been putting in through this phase, we will talk about this later going into the matches, mm -hmm. but Blossom is no longer a pushover, and they might be able to make something happen today against Mighty. Yeah, that's right, and with moving into a support role, I think that was the sacrifice that you were talking about, part, part of it, actually, and his support... Has been pretty good. The cleanses and all the ancestrals that he's been giving has been on the great timing. And soon we're going to jump into the introduction of both teams. But for now, oh, actually, we just jumped in. There's Mighty. And they want to get a 3-0 to the end. There is a, there's still some potentials of tie break in between L5, Tempest, and Mighty. So I'm looking extremely pressured in the booth there. Yeah, he actually looks tired too. So we'll Nasung is their main drafter, and the drafters tend to come under a lot of pressure. So that's of course as we go into draft. But we gotta talk about the stepping up of Magi and both Joker. I think Joker has been very strong. He has been pulling their heads since phase number one, and they're here, they're together. But Magi stepping up as the flex of the team to pick into lots of different roles. I think he's been filling in the holes exactly what they needed during the draft and also into the play. Yeah, as you said, Maggie has stepped into the flex role. He used to be a support player. He used to have a very mean Regar. It was very well known in Hero League. Whenever he played it, people would respect it. And him moving to the flex position and Nasong, who used to be the flex player, moving to the support position. At first, a lot of people were surprised, were confused, but it has worked out so well for both players that I just have to applaud the decisions that they make. And on the screen here, now we see Joker, the undisputed spearhead of the team. And whenever I talk about Mighty, I like to characterize them as a very balanced team. Joker, always at the forefront, leading the charge, but he's a very well-rounded warrior. And behind him, you have two somewhat aggressive players in BDG and Good, and two somewhat passive, reactive players in Boggy and Nasan. So, very well-balanced team, but now we see their opponent team, Blossom. Yep, and Blossom, they are looking to take this one as well. I think this is a fair matchup here as Series number one was very one-sided, but I don't think so for series number two at all. And as we mentioned already, Wiz changing, going into the support role. He's been flexing into, and also no chat as also in phase number one, number one, no chat has been playing so many different heroes. But with this new lineup, with this new roster, with Modern Life, Mora coming in, and Gondor, the new, the new star into the team, they are roles here the hero pool it fits perfectly i think they have what it takes to actually climb up a little bit higher as you said no chat played way too many heroes in phase one mm -hmm. oftentimes when everything works out when you're mvp black and you're gocha for example if you play that many heroes then it means that you're doing something right but if you're losing all your games and you're switching out heroes every single game then it usually means that something's going wrong that you don't really have a team identity yet and this phase, Blossom has been working hard 
to change that. And although they look still a bit too disorganized in many of their drafts, they are improving. And we see the super rookie key player, Gondar. Yeah, Gondar has been playing so many different picks, but oftentimes his stitches and also Arthur's pick, both one, both times they he actually brought the wins for him, his team. He was tanking pretty solidly in the front line. His hooks, oftentimes he's known as the player who goes for the fishing hook too. And that's his favorite talent, and we saw it happening just within the last few games. So maybe we'll see a great hook coming out again from Gondar. We'll see. Yeah, Gondar's proficiency with stitches comes from his long background in other games of a similar genre. The full interview is up on the HGC official website. So by Rally, yes. <laughs> by me. So if you haven't seen it yet, check it out. But. He has a very long history playing games in this genre, although Heroes is his first professional eSport. So Gondar, not too new to games of this kind, but very new to eSports in general, very new to the professional life. But so far he has performed admirably, stepping into the very difficult position that is the main tank role in Heroes of the Storm. It's so hard as a rookie to play that's the right. main tank, but he has done it very well so far. And that's along with Mora, Mor Mor the modern life previously was on the camera. His, I gotta say his Leoric play last time was very questionable. His positioning was very off sometimes. He, I didn't even know why he was there sometimes, but off, off from his Leoric others. Like the Haka, Martheo has been pretty decent, so maybe we'll see a very good matchup. The solo lane on top with Modern Life with good on the other side, oftentimes. Did you and Wolf explain mo why Modern Life became Mora on cast? I don't think so. Okay, so Mora, Modern Life became Mora because if you read Modern Life's uh, it's a short, name in yeah. Korean, it's Modern Life, and mm -hmm. if you take take out Mo the first letters of Ra, the yeah. modern and life, then it becomes Mora. So he just decided to go with Mora instead. And I asked him about it. Why did you change your name? Like, I sort of liked your ID. Modern life is pretty cool. Yeah, it reads I like nice. that too. So why did you change it to Mora? And he said that since he's changing teams, he's changing his mindset uh -huh. as well. And he wants to start clean with a fresh slate. And I can respect that. So I will miss calling him Modern Life. But Mora, not too bad of a nickname in itself, I guess. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still stuck to Modern Life. And yeah, I think that too. was a great idea. But I like his mindset as he's in the new team. He wants to fresh up. He wants to change lots of things. And even his plays, before when he was in Tempest, he was oftentimes the weak link. And in this team, I don't think he's the weak link. I think he actually brings up the team sometimes with his strong solo lanes oftentimes. Maybe we'll see one once more against Mighty. And the reason why we're back on camera seems like they're having a little more time to set up their stuff because it's you have to take care of all the Series 1, take the players out and get the new players in and you have to check all the keyboards, mouse. The It's usually the audio issues are the most common ones, but I, I'm not, I didn't get what exactly was happening so we may be talking for the rest of your life who knows i would be okay <laughs> with that except for the fact that i really have a severe throat cold that i so Ugh. maybe i'm going to get, die get soon if this really lasts for a lifetime i'm trying to get away from you no, <laughs> no but no but i'm no, glad we have a bit more time to talk about mm -hmm. modern life and blossom or mora and blossom because modern life why he left tempest it wasn't necessarily because he was a very bad solo laner, considering his rookie status. He was very new to the game, remember. I think he was actually as new to the game as Gondar, and he had a shorter period of time between right. picking up the game and his professional debut. So it had been an even tougher journey for Modern Life. And Modern Life, despite all that, still could put a very decent performances against mid-tier and bottom-tier solo laners. But against the cream of the crop, players like Dami, players like Rich. Jung Ha, Rich, Kyo Cha, he couldn't cut it. And it's not necessarily his fault, but the problem is that Tempest at that time That's had a roster stacked yes. with former world champions. And if you have four former world champions on your roster that are hungry to get another title, to return to glory, and then in that kind of context, 
yes, Modern Life might be a promising prospect, but he is holding the team down. So that's why he parted. And something that we need to talk about as well is that Modern Life actually told the members of Tempest that he was feeling pressured and that he perhaps could shine more, have a better better chance of developing as a player if he were to move to a lower tier team. So he got what he wanted as That's well. That's right. And he, after moving down a little bit, gaining some experience, maybe in the next phase he can change, he can go back into one of the higher teams. Possibly if he shows his performance, his level has gone up already. I can see that at the very beginning, the debut, with it became a meme in Korea. One rag equals one modern life <laughs> every time he dies in solo lane. So... Well, that was the beginning, but after a while, his Tyrael, even his Zeratul sometimes popped up and pretty good performances at the later later phase number one and now in Blossom. And uh, I gotta say, he's really stepped up even with Gondar as he can be he can be a friend, he can be a teammate to give advice as what to do when you first go, come into the pro scene and what he felt when he was in Tempest. And I feel like the synergy is there together with Blossom and also the Wiz, the brain of the team, holding everyone together. This team is working out fine and I, th I think they just need a little bit more time. Speaking of time, mm -hmm. I was talking about their sacrifice and dedication when we first got into this match. And since we have the time to elaborate a little bit further on it, I will. So Blossom have a team house. And they have a That's team right. house. And they are using their own money too. They're using their own money to fund the team fight. Uh, the team house. <laughs> oh, the team fight. <laughs> they're not fighting. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're not fighting, guys. Okay, they're not fighting. But the team house. And... You think that Bl Team Blossom has a sponsor, and yes, they do, but their sponsor doesn't give them financial benefits. Yeah, that's how desperate they are to get better, to, to get practice, better. and to possibly go towards the, those international matches later on. But it seems like we already both StarCraft manned, maps banned again. Game number one, actually, Sky Temple. Mighty was the one that chose it, so it seems like we'll see first ban, first pick, first ban from... Blossom, which almost seems like we may see the Chogao pick at the no. very end. <laughs> <laughs> well, not on this That map. no was way too quick. Bradley. Okay, I'm sorry, but... Well, Mighty taking Sky Temple, I think, definitely makes sense, considering that they are the much more experienced team. They definitely have the better rotations, the better sense of where to position on the map at a certain time. So, Blossom grabbing the Genji, though. Okay, Genji, it was open. So there's there's the Insta Genji. We need more Genji. We always have Genji. There we go. Both S tier supports banned, though. So, the support bans, slight bit of a surprise, but. Are you okay, Rally? Yeah, I'm not dying. It sounds like you're dying. <laughs> I'm not dying. And. I wanted to see the Illidan pickup, considering the map, and also considering the fact that Mighty's Good will be playing the Illidan. And if you recall back to the days of Power League Season 2, mm -hmm. when Illidan was being played by Good oftentimes on an amateur team, Good has always been a stellar Illidan player. And to see him busted out and seeing it paired with a Tassadar, very hyped to see him in action. Bringing in Tastar already. And Mighty was the one actually banned lots and lots of Illidan against the stronger teams like Tempest, MPV Black, oftentimes. And now they have they have Illidan in their hands. It really is them doing the research because Modern Life generally does not prefer to play Illidan. He does not feel confident on the hero, so Mighty were comfortable with opening him up in the draft. And we see Stitches Malfurion. So, the yeah. more important pick in this case is mm -hmm. Stitches, I believe, and Malfurion doubles as the go to support right now that can chain CC alongside the hook because Uther isn't available, so that makes sense. And Malfurion is always a very good answer to Illidan in general, thanks to Twilight Dream. So, so far, quite standard from both teams. Malfurion from Mighty, what do you think? Oh, it pairs up the angels, so I like it in a way, but hmm. I think they just want to limit the strength of modern life because that 
Hello, Mar Martheo's solo lane is so powerful, can sustain himself. So limiting that from his hands will actually bring out because he played 13 different heroes this phase. And only one Illidan, as you mentioned, he does not really prefer Illidan. So I think limiting one of his best heroes right now in this patch is a pretty good ban. I actually thought that Mighty might have wanted to go with the Li Ming ban in the second phase of the draft, but so far, and Blossom going with the support choke. Yeah, I like this Regar ban. That would limit the pressure that the ability and the opportunity of dive in Illidan has maybe actually go towards Metamorphosis if, if he is into the dangerous spot when he hits 10. That can change the game, so. Not having that Ancestral healing will be very big when you are going in that because if you don't have the Ancestral, maybe Tassar also has to dive in together. I was hoping for a double global composition with a bright wing pickup, but historically speaking, Nasong has never been too fond of Brightwing, whereas he has oftentimes played Karazim to great effect. He's a very stellar Karazim player, I would say, so definitely not too surprising the support pickup from Mighty and Anubarak, as always, standard answer, very meta pick, good answer to Genji, and Blossom now at the last rotation of their pick phase. Not this game, guys, not this game. I know what you're thinking, but not this game. Yeah, not the Kerizim actually fell so low. Look at the win rate also. It's not just because he lost in damage, because a lot of melee assassins came back in. Kerizim was not as much as needed compared to before, when it was all ranged, and Kerizim was in there to do massive damage like a melee assassin. But if you have too many, you get trapped in there together. That's the threat, and if you cannot heal, a lot and have the sustain where we, the sustain is the meta right now and they decide to round out their draft with Raymane and the hawk and the tracer, tracer is here out. the cavalry is here <laughs> okay well here the tracer is here and ooh, does have somewhat of a cc from the other side can tracer survive all those aoe cc's and the drag i think it's possible with those blinks there aren't any point and click threats on the side of Blossom aside from the Gorge, so I think Tracer is a decent pickup here, but we'll get a chance to talk more about the draft once again. In okay, game. yes. Mighty bringing the Tracer and Blossom bringing a very balanced and standard Stitches Malfurion pair up. Let's go into game number one and find out who will be starting in their favor. Sky Temple. In blue, Mighty. Joker on Nubarak, BDG on Tracer, Good on Illidan, Nasang on Karazim, and Magi on Tassadar. And on the red side, we see Team Blossom with Wiz on Malfurion, Gondar on Stitches, Mora on the Haka, Dutu on Genji, and No Chat on Greymane, one of his favorite heroes. Tracer against uh, Genji. That's. If you cannot rock. stop all the basic attacks, if you <laughs> deflect your own, you, you have to actually, spam D. You have to spam D or H, yeah, well, either yeah. either one, and it's very tough to actually stop your auto attacks as a tracer, and you can actually kill yourself by doing that. It takes about half half of your HP if you get all the hits back. So something that BDG will have to keep in mind as he enters the team fights and both teams going for an exchange onto the outer wall of alternating forts. I don't think they will go for a full fort trade, but if one this team decides to commit to it, then there is no viable way to respond except for, for the very the very thing. For the very, very early game, for the first temple phase, of course this fort trade will be better for Mighty, but for the second one, losing that fountain on the bottom lane, Blossom will be looking for towards that potential. Yeah. But if Mighty can actually snowball beforehand, 
if they can stall so much time for the first tempo phase that they will be 10 before the second tempo phase, then they can stall for their lead from the very beginning. Something to keep in mind is that after level 10, both teams are going to have a global. But before level 10, the side with Dehaka is the only one team that has a global. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, if both teams engage in such an early Ford exchange, then the side with the global has more room to maneuver around the maps. So Blossom will be slightly more happy about this, possibly. But now the first temple phase opens. And uh, and Mighty's for now taking both. And that's a hook onto Tastar. The pair up with the root did not connect perfectly. But got the shift out. There's cocktail damage. And Mora joins the team fight. Drags Tastar. No shift available. Very good decision from Another Mora. hook. Poro charge will save in. Root barely misses at the very end. He knew that shift was not available as told by his team, so mm -hmm. decided to go for the Tiasadar. Great presence of mind there. Elementary play, but solidly executed. But in response, Mighty managed to take the entire shots of the top temple. So neither team will be too disappointed with what they have accomplished in the first temple phase. Yep, very good trade for both of the team. Now this adds a second. That temple, first temple phase was very quick, very, very quick. And second temple phase will be happening when they're about seven and a half levels or right before eight. And that's going to be a big win for Blossom because they actually got the fourth down on Mighty side already on the bottom lane. No fountain, no pair up. So double support, they will have the sustain. But without the fountain, if they look for a long, long fight, they can look for more potentials to get those hooks, get those kills. And Blossom are staying way ahead in these mercenary camp rotations. But something to keep in mind is that because they rolled the siege camp perhaps a tad too early, a lot of experience was lost in the bottom lane because they couldn't extend too far out, especially knowing that the rest of Mighty would have been positioned around their own siege camp. So a slight experience lead going in the favor of Mighty. Yep, another hook attempted just to get the shift out. And Dudu going in, looking for more harass, possibly even looking for a kill. Kerosene comes in a rush to heal his teammate. That could have been sticky, but this situation is also sticky for Mora, but he manages to escape perfectly. I think he also ignored the damage from Perth Pulse Bomb coming in. It certainly looks like it. Mm -hmm. Well done by Mora. Not getting picked off there. Tracer's Pulse Bomb has already been used also there, so lots of benefits and no chat teams. Okay, I thought he was actually on the other side. Never mind. What do you think of Tassadar's level 1 talent choice? Because that's something that we haven't seen in a very, very long time. Yeah, it's not even Lockdown Storm build coming out, and it will take a long time in this map, especially when they already have lost the fort at the bottom. I'm not sure if it's intended or it's a misclick. I think... Judging from the relative strengths of the three talents Tassadar has available at level one, it, it could very well be a misclick, I think. We'll see we'll in two see. later games if it pays off or not. Mora is right now clearing the top lane, soaking in the XP because they are a little bit behind and while that's happening, so this is the kind of thing that we're talking about. BDG hits and he's the one damaged. But of course, with the fountain down, Blossom takes control of the bottom temple. For now, there's a big rotation coming down though from Mighty side, and they will be looking for, towards that pen. It's very nearby. Illidan is coming down, and Dehaka will want to come as well. Team fight breaks out. Hook used onto Tassadar, so not much, but Mora comes in from the brush, from the bush, looking for the perfect drag onto the Tassadar. Does it have enough damage to actually take him out too? There's a pulse bomb onto No Chat, but does not secure the kill, and now good is AoE, and meanwhile, Dutu is looking for the kill on the other side. Well done from Blossom. That could have been much more well played by Blossom, I feel, but mm -hmm. props to Modern Life for landing the precise strat, the exact one his team needed to get his team rolling into the team fight. And Dutu dove a little bit too deep to abuse his dash resets and didn't manage to get both enemies, but he at least traded before falling in the 1v2. So Blossom will be happy with the outcome of this team fight and Mighty. I don't know. 
We could say negative things about this, but it, it's important to note that Illidan finally has access to the hunt. So this changes the macro dynamic That's of right. this game by a lot. Because Mo Mora was often escaping from the gank gank camp and also joining the team fight, soaking extra EXP. But now Illidan can, with the hunt, can soak up extra at the same time. So the macro fight will be real. It will be similar in terms of way. And we see Karazim holding in that question mark for now. And it is seven-sided. Not the worst of Rogue Choice, I feel. Definitely something you can take, especially when you're running double support with Tassadar. And Nasong has always been a rather bloodthirsty Karazim, as Karazims go, so no big surprise here. And there's a... Now with the lane sh shift, lane change onto the bottom. Does not have the... Does not have the tower, so it will take a while to actually... Hunt lands on to Genji. Ooh, there's a, a Tampa backs out right after. That was a wasted hunt, I would say, but the cooldown is so short, it wouldn't matter Ooh. that much. The hooks from Gondar today, the sometimes it did not land, but the angle that it goes and the timing has been pretty good. And they've always got the shift out from Tastar, and then the Haka came in from the side and dragged onto him twice. They got the kill every single time. Seems like it was very well practiced and it's happening in game. Oftentimes, we have seen the exact sequence of events that you mentioned to happen in this game. And two temples open up. Blossom staying ahead, both in lane pressure and in experience. So they will probably look to soak to level 13 before deciding on a course of action here. They should reach that pretty soon. Uh, oh, it's a beetle. It's Here important to get rid of beetles before our team fight. Yes, of course. We'll stop all the skill shots of going in. As a leaming player, it's very harassing. I believe Blossom will be perfectly okay to trade temples like this. Mighty catch up to level 13 as well, so both teams pretty much equal on almost all fronts. They're also them are slightly ahead in structure. Yeah, though. and they're also staying in all together because they do not really see Illidan anywhere on the map right now in terms of Blossom. So they're staying together, looking for the possible possibility of the hunt coming out. So both teams really respecting each other's global movement abilities and playing a very measured, deliberate style, something that we haven't seen too often in HEC Korea unless it was L5 or MVP Flag, so I like it. Mora exiting safely, harding back home. That's the kind of play that we saw. That's a big improvement that he has not been dying solo. Oftentimes he has been escaping. Modern Knight stepping up, but with this protection, Strike Tracer, if she was rooted, I think they actually could have got a kill, but not yet. Oh, and he got a few blinks out and not a recall. Mm, Mora comes from the side and Gets the drag onto the Karazim. Doesn't even use Twilight Dream. They're looking for the kill. Get the, gets the root. Seven-sided will save them him for a moment. Actually, Dash is out, but here's the Dragon Blade. Dudu is looking for more kills. There's another Dash, but actually Cocoon. But he manages to get another kill before the Cocoon. There's the Han. Good, like, looking for more kills. Now, Genji is back in action, but is it in time? No Who's shirt, but there's a shield. Oh, there's another kill. It's a good trade. Three to two trade, and Illidan is looking for a moral kill, but can he do it against these three? I'm not sure if the drag, yes, it secures the kill. Morris drags this game have been absolutely on point, and will he get the final kill onto Joker here? Doesn't have enough damage to take it down. And generally speaking, in a very messy team fight like those, you would expect that the side with total support and so much mobility in team fights with the Karazim, with the Tracer, the Illidan, that Mighty would have a better time. But simply because Blossom managed to take down two of Mighty before the team fight ent entered its extended phase, especially taking Tracer down right before Genji was cocooned, that was super huge and allowed them to win the team fight. Yeah, I think I also think Cocoon was a little bit slow. Yeah. Genji actually got two kills before going into the Cocoon. And this is Mighty and hold on to the Mighty being actually super aggressive as they are still talent level down. Maybe they saw stitches going back up. As they do have the hunt. 
to join into the team fight any time. So good measured, sl small advantage came by Mighty there. And I agree with you about the cocoon usage. And I think what Joker was thinking is that I want to see Genji pop the Dragon Blade before I use Cocoon. I think that's what he might have been thinking. But it ended up being way too late because Tracer fell. Yep, and the Ferret Roof has been missing, but look at the deflect damage. That was all from BDG. Seven-sided of just to buy time once more. And because Tracer had to blink out and Whoa, Joker, you should not oh be- no. Oh, he oh actually no. goes over the wall! And Tutu, he also used Dragon Blade! No! He should have thought of the shield. And there's oh, a hole! The Twilight Dream! BDG managed to dodge the Twilight Dream with the recall, so props to him there, but an Uberok fell in that exchange, and BDG doesn't have a recall now. He will surely fall to Greymane. And now Good is trying to do what is what's best for the team, but he has to run away. The hook misses. So close. Gladly for Tassadar. That could have been another kill. Gondar's hooks. Wow. Mighty's pretense of being calm and measured completely broke down in the last minute or so. They were caught out. Karazim destroyed right at the start of the team fight, and they managed to look like they were going to turn it around through the dive onto Malfurion, but a very good Twilight Dream canceled all of Mighty's hopes and dreams, plunged them down the toilets, and now. Another team fight going on on the side of the Gondor. And there's the seven sided strike on to Stitches. Very low, actually. Look good looking for the kill, but he's alone. Joker comes in to save his teammate, and Kerosene even comes. There's a cocoon uses. Does at least get the kill on to Stitches, but Blossom is trying to turn this around. And seems like that's a good trade. 1 1. 1 1 trade with the tanks on the front line. Due to Nasang off to the side, but Genji is coming in with the strip strike. BDG taking the off, and good is trying to do again. Dragon what he can, but the Dragon, Dragon Blade. Blade is doing so much more onto the side. Magi is looking for his life. The shift is off now. And the Ash is in. Double support. That's the power. The sustain is real, but no one else is left. <laughs> Only the double support is left standing. And yes. I really like how Mighty decided to tune up the aggression, knowing that they were behind. They got a pretty decent pick onto Gondor with the Force Wall and the Seven Sided Strike and managed to whittle him down to lower than half HP. Very decent opening sequence there, but the problem is that Tracer wasn't available for most of the team fights. And although Mora's first drag missed by a mile, his second drag hit squarely <laughs> onto <laughs> Tracer. Yes. And whoa, drag. Drags are very short, so yes. maybe he couldn't have missed by a model. Eight anyway. miles. Yes, that's the word. <laughs> and Tutu on his Genji. Except for the one that he went over the wall and never came back. And I gotta say, Genji is pretty powerful in this meta right now. Love Genji. Please. Please. No, but in all seriousness, I have been very, very critical of Dutu's Genji until now. I have been never convinced of his Genji play. He always seems to la seemed to lack the finesse necessary to play such a mechanically intensive hero. But today against Mighty, he has been piloting this extremely well. I think their practice, their long hours that they're putting in, in their team house is finally starting to show. Yeah, look at the damage coming out, actually. 41k alone coming out from Blossom. Compare that to Tracer. Actually, Illidan, even though he has been fighting such a long time in the back line, only did 26k comparably to Genji. So, so much damage actually coming out from Tracer. You can see that Illidan is more for the harass and to buy time, to buy aggro onto the back line of Blossom there. A very interesting decision from Blossom's Gondar. Usually, you would take the Hardened Shield at 20, no? But he decides Full to upgrade his bio, so that's going to be and bio, quite yes. fun mm -hmm. to watch. And no fishing hook this time, as I don't think it's even needed. He's, yeah, he's been landing pretty good hooks. Of course, that extra range can help him, but look these at these drags. drags. These drags. Let's get the recall out, too. Mora has always piloted the Hakka above average. It was one of his most played, if not his most played, hero on his entire tenure on Tempest. But I think on Blossom, he
he has reached a new level of mastery on the hero. His grabs have never looked as aggressive and mighty. I like the response that they're going with. Who Rotating two members gets... to the top side of the map to take down the keep. But the problem is that this boss looks powerful enough to go to for all the, the way, core. yes, all the way to the core. Ooh, That's the nice dodge on to the hook there. Yeah, actually, I think that almost connected too. That's using them stop over frames to great effect. That's right, and this fort will be a goner in just a matter of seconds, but they are looking to go to the core because Mighty is still not 20. The boss is way too There's healthy. There's a hook oh. the BDG. Recalls save his life, but that was close. With and no recall, Tracer is just bait for Genji. Only has few blinks available. There's a seven-sided strike. Doing tons of damage to Gondar, though. Does not get the kill. And there's a drag onto Illidan. Good. It's so low. He has to back out or else he will be dead. Gets the kill onto Stitches, but Karajim already dead. They're losing so many members. And Boss already on the core. BDG has to go back home. This seems like it's going to be core. It's going to be game. Going to be Blossom. Blossom take down Mighty in rather dominant fashion. This was not an expected win. We expected that Blossom would be competitive going into the series, but this this kind of domination on a map that Mighty wanted for themselves, such confidence, such mechanical precision from Mora and Dutu and Gondar, very well played by Team Blossom. Okay, let's talk about game number one a little bit more as I was just swift raging throughout that <laughs> end. I thought it was possible, but not it looked too easy. That grabbing onto BDG, Tracer, getting that recall out was big. But while that was happening, Good came in for the harass, but Mora's drag onto perfect target. So both of the, their damage was basically removed from the fight. And they got the picks onto Kerizim. Basically, the game was over at that moment. But let's talk, talk about from the beginning of the fight. What do you think went wrong in terms of Mighty? The last team fight you're talking about? No, the entire game. Oh, the entire game. Mm -hmm. Speaking in terms of the entire game, I honestly think that BDG did not live up to expectations on the tracer. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to be hit by so many hooks, so many drags. When you have the blinks. Yeah, yes. we can count the number of times that tracer was just caught out wide open in full sight of the opposition and just get hit by drags, by hooks, and without recall, she's pretty much easy food for Genji and that's what happened in so many team fights. Yeah, I think it's also that and possibly more for Mora and Gondar actually. Those skill shots were landing on point, possibly 70% plus on that game and those drags, those hooks, when they started getting picks onto Tassadar, that was the beginning of the snowball and Mighty seemed very lost after they were taken by surprise a little bit there. And if we want to go even further back in time, sort of like Tracer does, then, Recall. then we really have to talk about how Dutu playing such a good Genji was unexpected by everyone. And Mighty did not expect that either. I think that is a large part of why Mighty let Blossom first pick Genji. Because Dutu has played Genji before, he was very underwhelming on it, but today, things were different. His Genji is now a force to be reckoned with, and Mighty will be much more wary of letting that through the draft like that. And the second map today is going to be Dragonshire. And not Tomb of the Spider Queen. That's a big surprise for me, actually, because they would always, always go for the Tomb of the Spider Queen. But this shows changes, and I think, as you mentioned, it has to do with the having a team house practicing so hard to climb up there. Let's see what kind of macro plays 